Welcome back to Crypto Zaras. I am George. Welcome to tonight's stream. Yes, Bitcoin pumped and it continues to pump and it continues to go higher and higher and higher. Today is a special day, of course, because of the Elon effect, because of Tesla buying Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin is really, really, really close to 50,000, guys. <laughs> I mean, just take a step back and think about it. It's pretty soon, one Bitcoin will cost you $50,000. So those of you guys that bought Bitcoin at 1000 at 3000 at 10000 even $20,000, you made a boatload of money and it's not going to stop here. But here's the thing. Are you paying attention to everything else? Are you paying attention to all coins? Are you paying attention to DeFi? Because if you're not, you be, you could be missing even more gains coming up. So that is what today is. Uh, that's what today's stream is all about. Is not only look at Bitcoin, what's coming next for Bitcoin, but also all coins. Because there's still a lot of things happening in the DeFi space, in all coins, in crypto overall, and you don't want to miss this explosion that is about to come and hit us. It's going to be avalanche, avalanche of gains. That's right around the corner. So, all right, let's discuss. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I have two streams now, one at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and one at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you tune in. If you are new, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified, hit that notification bell and also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. I've been a lot more active on Twitter. So those of you guys that's been following me, you know that I've been posting some good information out there, right? All right, let's get started. Uh, let me change my screen. Those of you guys that's already in the chat, welcome. Uh, we're gonna have a lively one, of course. Um, all right, so here it is. Uh, Bitcoin is right under $46,000 and it almost breached $48,000 not too long ago, right? So to recap what happened this morning, while most of us were sleeping, we got up, we checked our phones and we were like, whoa, we see this giant pump up the Elon effect because Tesla declared they're buying Bitcoin. And of course, Bitcoin went up all the way to $45,000 kind of hovered there for a little bit and then started getting a little weak and myself including many others are like why is Bitcoin coming down why is it not going towards fifty thousand dollars and guess what our friends at f2 pool decided to increase their selling for some reason and i tweeted this out you could clearly see that this is on the hour chart that starting february 8th you could see that the selling volume increased dramatically these these bars right here represent a large amount of bitcoins flowing out of the mining pool and guess where it's going straight to exchanges being sold so this one 912 this one 1282 and then several other 630 561 400 see now it makes me wonder all those periods within the last few years right and unfortunately crypto quant charts don't go back far enough to show all those times we were wondering, what are the whales doing? You know, the big whales that's been selling behind the scenes. Who are they, right? Now I have a suspicion that it's been F2 pool all along because no other mining pools out there have deviations like this where they have uh, extreme selling and outflows during good times. Um, every single other mining pool is just flat, flat, consistent, regardless of price, but not F2 pool. So it does look like the miners that's either on the pool or then they themselves or a combination of both or they're doing something suspicious uh, is happening. But guess what? Guess what? Despite all this, despite all this, uh, you know what? Bitcoin rallied. It didn't matter because afterwards, this starting from tonight, this afternoon, depending on where you live or in the morning, uh, Bitcoin started shooting up from 42 all the way to 48,000 and came down. You know why? Because I think Asia woke up and Asia FOMO kicked in, right? Um, uh, Korea, Japan, 
and all these other countries, right? That's very, very pro Bitcoin. They woke up and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> we need to get ourselves some more Bitcoin before, before <laughs> daily crypto. Appreciate that. Do and someone else gave me a super chat there. Human trash. <laughs> that would be a plot twist. It would be another plot twist if I was Shatoshi and I was doing that uh, and I was just fooling everyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Uh, Jackson have went live stating Doge going to $5. YouTube shut him down. Post on your Twitter. Are you serious? <laughs> I'll have to look at that. Uh, Jackson Palmer uh, was, was, uh, <laughs> was the founder of Dogecoin. And uh, he, he left the project. Now he's saying he's going to 5 and YouTube shut him down. That's amazing. That's, that's pretty entertaining uh, to think about. Uh, but anyways, okay. To, uh, I lost track of thought. Thanks for super chat. But anyways, Asia woke up and said, you know what? Uh, we don't care about F2 pool. Well, we're going to buy. And they sent Bitcoin straight up almost to $50,000. And right now, it's recovering a little bit. Uh, it's taking a breather. That is fine, right? Whenever, whenever, this, uh, whenever this happens, it's actually a good thing. Because Bitcoin has gone up so much, so much, so fast. It's taking a breather. Now it seems like things are leveling out, right? It might level out like this for another day or two. But you know what? I have a feeling this week is uh, is not over in terms of big explosive news. And I'm going to get to who I'm talking about in a little bit. There's there's just a lot. There's a lot that's coming, right? Um, but yeah, that's the situation with Bitcoin right now. But that's why I want to let you guys know, most of you guys, not, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of you guys, are pure BDC, right? Holding all BDC, very, very little altcoins, but I think it's a time to pay attention, right? I've been streaming for about a week or two now about altcoins and how I'm diversifying and that has helped me quite a bit. So even though Bitcoin is rallying up to the moon and it's gonna go a lot higher, Watch out for the altcoins. Watch out for DeFi. They're not going away and their gains could be even more substantial, at least short term, right? So let's, uh, let me get through some of this. So obviously, uh, this is the big thing right now. There's a lot of articles. It's like every single, every single news outlet, station, uh, blog, everyone is talking about this and repercussions of this. For us Bitcoiners, we love it. We think this is fantastic, right? This is the best thing on earth, basically, because now you have Tesla, which is one of the top 10 companies in the world. You have Tesla bugs that really, 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 really believe in Tesla and believe that Elon could do no wrong. And then you have Bitcoiners who also think the same thing about Bitcoin, right? And now you're combining the two. But not everyone, not everyone is a fan of both sides. So I've been reading stories about how Tesla investors and and uh, and just analysts that's questioning this move, why Elon did it, why Tesla did it. Well, it's because Elon, I've always said, thinks outside the box. He wants to do things differently. And he wants to stick it to the man, even though he is the richest man on earth, if you think about that. He wants to stick it to the man, meaning the regulators, meaning the Wall Street guys that's been hedging Tesla all these years. Even though he's proven them that he is right, he has been right all along, doing his own thing, leading his own path, and becoming the world's richest man. He's still trying to stick it to him by buying Bitcoin. That's the type of guy he is, right? And the analysts and all these naysayers, they're not sure. Uh, if it's going to turn out to be the right move, it is. It is. Watch. The reason why Tesla has been doing what they've been doing is because of his leadership. And, of course, Michael Saylor led the way. He had a phone conversation with Elon. He's been asked directly whether or not he had that phone conversation. He doesn't deny it. So I'm pretty sure when they had that Twitter exchange, they did have that conversation. And that is why Elon is like, yes, I could do this without but basically following michael Saylor's strategy without being scrutinized by the sec or anyone else because michael already proved it michael bought 1.1 billion dollars of bitcoin and elon of course had to up him and buy 1.5 billion but you know what this could be only the beginning elon could be 
sporadically being buying Bitcoin in the future and just just tweeting it out. I bought another 100 million Bitcoin. I up bought another 50 million of Bitcoin, right? Probably not to the extent that Michael Saylor is doing an ad, but um, but you know, you never know. You never know, right? So obviously this is huge, absolutely huge, and is making everyone, everyone look at Bitcoin in a different light. In fact, even the mayor of, uh, of Miami, um, he's been very pro Bitcoin, very, very, very pro Bitcoin. And he even tweeted this out, working on a resolution for our commission for this Thursday's meeting to get the ball rolling. Elon Musk's announcement was very helpful. Now all we need is Amazon to adopt and then the moon. Basically, he wants to turn, he wants to turn Miami, city of Miami into like a Bitcoin slash crypto hotspot. Very, very, very pro crypto, right? And Elon's endorsement, right, uh, is really adding legitimacy. It's like, it's really hard for naysayers to come up and say, you know what, we don't trust it. Well, how can you not trust Elon and Tesla, the eighth largest company in the world, uh, if they're buying it, then who are you to say that you can't trust it as it's not legitimate, right? So it really changes, it just really changes the narrative for everyone, for, for really everyone. And of course, Bitcoin and for corporations just happened recently, right? I've been saying that is gonna be huge. That's why I say this week, this week is not over. Just because Elon announced today does not mean we're not going to get more explosive news by the end of this week, right? There are bigger companies. There are bigger companies than Tesla. Yes. And one of them is Apple. <laughs> now, a lot of reports are now coming out that Apple is in a perfect spot to offer crypto, not only to offer payments, but also offer crypto trading. And this RBC report is mind blowing. They go beyond that. They say Apple can make the United States leaders of the crypto revolution just be, just if Apple enters the game. I mean, it's, it's huge. We're hearing about, right, China coming out the digital yuan and they're already testing and payment. They already have their payment apps, right? Like Alipay and so forth. Well, you know what? The U.S. has Apple and Apple Pay, even though it's not as big, but they certainly have a lot of people um, with a lot of Apple devices out there. Right. So um, this is pretty big. This is pretty big. OK, to to basically sum up, they're like Apple has a wallet app already. Right. So they could definitely add, they could definitely add crypto trading. And because they already have this whole ecosystem of KYC, right? They already know who you are. If you use Apple Pay, you know, they basically know your information already. So they have this closed ecosystem of security. And you know what? Basically, if you want to get involved with crypto trading or, or crypto buying or whatever, or utilizing it for payments, Apple already ha has all that. It, the, the barrier to entry would be very, very small. And plus Apple devices are pretty secure biometrics. Face scan, fingerprint scans, all that good stuff, right? So basically, they could get in pretty easily. And if that's the case, man, that would be explosive. And this is not even them buying Bitcoin, right? But if they're going to offer crypto trading, just like PayPal, guess what? They're going to have to buy hand over fist of Bitcoin to be able to offer it to clients, right? To customers. Uh, but who's to say they won't buy it for themselves? Because... Apple has $200 billion of cash sitting on the sideline. $200 billion. If you thought $1.5 billion from, from Tesla was a lot, think about $200 billion just sitting there collecting dust, doing nothing, depreciating, and losing its buying power by 15% year over year over year. Trust me, Apple CFO and all the money crunchers they know this, but they're tied. They don't know what to do. They can't just buy any company they want, right? They can't just go buy out all their closest competitors because they will be sued by the regulators left and right. And they can't certainly be like Peter Schiff and say, okay, we're going to buy gold. So they are very, very limited in terms of what they could do. Well, now here's the alternative. Tesla made it legitimate, made it real. 
And I bet you Apple is looking at this very, very, very seriously. Not only Apple, Microsoft. Microsoft is looking at this very, very, very seriously. And so is Amazon. The biggest tech companies on earth are all looking at Bitcoin, right? That's why this week is not over. One of these big players could be announcing something. And it's not just them. There's other big companies around the world. They are absolutely interested in Bitcoin for corporations. Michael Saylor actually said there was, uh, I think, 4,000 or 6,000 attendees, maybe even higher than that, to Bitcoin for corporations. And guess what? They're, they're not just attending because they're bored out of mind and don't, they don't want to work. No, they want to learn how to get involved, right? So uh, pretty darn big. Uh, Brian Lynn, big super chat. Been watching Marcus since 2016, watching a video every day since 15K subs. Today is the day we've all been waiting for. Appreciate what you do. I'm glad all things pay off. Bet for the win. <laughs> yes, thank you. I appreciate that. So that is, that is pretty amazing, right? That's pretty amazing. This news was so big that people forgot that today was the introduction of CME's uh, Ethereum futures, right? Did anyone talk about this today? No, no one talked about it because the, the Elon Tesla story was so darn big, right? Um, but yeah, but yeah. Um, so moving on from Bitcoin, <laughs> there is a lot of altcoins that have done very well. And one of them going forward, I believe, will do very well because of institutional adoption and buying is Ethereum. I've been talking about Ethereum for a while, right? This just started, but we know it's gonna build. The volume first day is probably very low, but look at this. Grayscale's latest numbers published today. Bitcoin under uh, under management over twenty seven thousand dollars. And I don't I don't know if this takes into account that Bitcoin's rise up to forty six forty seven thousand. So this tomorrow could be even bigger. But look at number two. This is why you don't want to sleep on Ethereum at this point. Five billion under management, right? So this number is going up. It's going up, which shows institutions do have an interest in the biggest blockchain protocol or network protocol out there that's meant to host dApps, right? They see Ethereum and Bitcoin being two different players. They're not competing. And that's the right mind of thought. They don't compete. Ethereum is not a store value and Bitcoin is not a, a layer created for dApps, at least not right now. Maybe it can expand that to that in the future, but it doesn't look like it. Bitcoin is a store of value, right? So institutions are looking into it, which is why I think Ethereum futures will increase and overall help Ethereum in a big way. But not only because of institutional adoption, but um, because of basically their own their own adoption, their own change what they have been introducing all, all these years. And the latest is DeFi. And look at where DeFi is going right now. And it's just absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy right now. Um, what else is there? Uh, I wanna show you guys this real quick. Overall market cap of everything, assets, stocks, everything that exists on earth, basically. And Bitcoin, look at where Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is number nine. Bitcoin is actually bigger than Tesla. So even though, yes, Elon and Tesla, their involvement is a big, big, big endorsement. Guess what? Bitcoin is actually bigger. Bitcoin is actually bigger than Tesla. So doesn't that blow your mind that, yes, it seems like, oh, Bitcoin, we needed help from Tesla. No, not really. Well, yes, it did. But no, not really, because Bitcoin is actually bigger than Tesla. So think about that. And Bitcoin is well on its way up to one trillion market cap. It will exceed silver, and then it'll exceed uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and eventually it will get up to gold. And then at that point, we're all gonna be buying our G7s at that point, right? That's when Bitcoin will be above $600,000, heading to a million dollars, and the world will change forever, as we know, because of Bitcoin. Right. So it's definitely going up there. It's already worth more than half of silver. Right. And if you look at it's interesting and they don't just list Bitcoin, they list Ethereum too. Ethereum is at number 55 at 200 billion dollars. Right. 200 billion dollars is no joke. 
$200 billion for Ethereum is bigger than Eli Lilly, bigger than Pfizer, bigger than Pepsi, right under AT&T, Cisco, Toyota, Coca-Cola, Salesforce. I mean, these are big names, well-known names out there. So if you think Bitcoin's big, Ethereum is right up there too. That's pretty amazing. I, I usually don't show Ethereum. I just show Bitcoin. So today I decided to look at it. I'm like, man, Ethereum is up there too. If it was a company, it'll be the 55th largest company in the world. It'll be a Fortune 100 company if it was a company. That's pretty amazing too. I, it, it really is. All right, uh, let me get to, uh, I guess, the, the last two things I want to talk about um, is, of course, DeFi. DeFi is still exploding. $37 billion total locked in value. And the locked in value continues to go up and up and up and up and up, right? Every single day, this seems to go up. Uh, Keith, I did not have a chance to look at Trust Swap. So I'm sorry, I did not. <laughs> um, but I will, I will, I'll get there, I'll get there. You got to give me some time. I've been looking at other projects though. Um, but yeah, you look at Maker, Ave, Compound, Curve, Uniswap, Sushi Swap, right? I told you guys not to sleep on sushi swap. Look at the liquidity. It's catching up on Uniswap really, really, really fast, right? And there's something else that's right behind sushi swap that's also coming up really, really, really fast. But synthetic, Badger Dow, all these guys you have heard of before, right? Ren, um, they're going up like crazy, like crazy, right? And I think DeFi is here to stay. I don't think this is a fad. Maybe overpriced. You could argue, yes, maybe it's overpriced. But then again, all crypto projects pretty much are overpriced at this point so you can't really use that against them but DeFi has a legitimate place in crypto you think about crypto it, it, it's, it's basically money right it is money so obviously DeFi makes a whole lot of sense decentralized finance you want to borrow right utilize utilize your crypto to borrow you want to earn interest stake stake your crypto you want to you want to trade Sure, you could trade it. You could trade it with one-on-one uh, -on -one trading or on a, on a DEX where people are providing the liquidity pools which you are, you know, bar, uh, trading against. So, I mean, DeFi is definitely here to say. Now, there's also other things. Uh, like I said, you could be a liquidity provider. You could create synthetic tokens. You could create derivative products, right? And there's just so much that's coming. It's so early which is why, you know what, some of these players, some of these projects can become the future banks of the world. They could be that big. It just seems like it's impossible at this point. But think about what a bank does. What a bank does is allow you to deposit and collect interest, which is basically zero now, no matter what you choose. Or you could take a loan. You could get a mortgage loan or a car loan. Well, pretty soon you could do all that. I mean, you could literally do that now with DeFi. And why do you need a bank, right? Pretty soon, you don't need a bank at all. So DeFi is definitely here to stay, which is why um, the entire market cap, not just Bitcoin, has gone up today. Look at the overall market cap, $1.35 trillion. Yes, BDC dominance did go up by a few percentage points because obviously Bitcoin shot up today by 20%. So that's going to have an effect. But yeah, the overall market cap is still doing good. Very, very good overall. And that's why my thumbnail, I had a few of these projects, but look at big caps. You know, Ethereum up 8% over 1,700 again. Polkadot is now going full steam again, right? Cardano has been pumping up as of late. Polkadot slowed down. Now Polkadot is pumping again. So they're like neck and neck, both at $21 billion and they continue to climb. And just look at across the board, everything. Everything pretty much is in green, right? And some of the projects that have been stalling a little bit, you know what? Uh, I think they will they will get their chance soon. But, uh, you know, like projects like Aave and Uniswap, they're kind of taking it easy today. But, you know what? Like Aave is up already 63% for the week. So, yeah. Elrond is doing very, very, very well right now. Really pumping up. It's going really... I mean, they're on a way to pass up Tron and EOS. You know, here's the thing. And I don't I don't want to take credit saying, oh, I've been saying it all the time. But when Elrond first came out and I looked at them and I don't know how big they were, maybe like a couple hundred million at that time. 
I looked at them and I realized that the founders were investors in Binance. Remember, Binance only came out in 2017. So they were first investors. They were Bitcoiners and they made a lot of money in Bitcoin. They invested in Binance and that investment probably turned them into very, very, very wealthy people that then got even more wealthy, right? Um, but because of that, you know, Elron is also IEO that came out of the Binance incubator. And I've always said, Binance is not gonna let one of its projects die. That's why I've always liked Elron early on. And then for a while, you know, kind of lost track of them, but now they're coming up. And I was right because Binance basically have to obey these people. These are actually investors. They're actually part owners of Binance. So CZ probably has a special connection with uh, the founders of Elrond. Just to want to point that out to you guys. Um, Theta, I've been very bullish on Theta. I've been talking about Theta a lot. Terra, I've been telling you guys a lot about Terra. Keeps going up to the moon and rightfully so because they are a damn good project if I say so myself. Um, a lot of you guys love synthetic avalanche is another protocol blockchain that is up and coming up 125% Solana another one that I really like up 86% this week compound taking a breather just kind of like Aave right now but I do think it's gonna come right back up I have no idea why Iota is uh, pumping recently but I don't like Iota V chain I do like V chain I do like a lot. I, I'm waiting for these pumps to come with V chain, but they're not coming right now. I don't know why. V chain should be pumping much higher. Should be V chain should be a top ten coin, but it hasn't popped yet. But I'm waiting, and I think it's because because of China's involvement right now, right? So China has not opened up fully. When they do, I think they go they go explode. They're gonna explode, man. Twenty seven hundred people. I think that's a record for my streams. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. For those of you guys who are new, smash that like, subscribe to the channel, right? Um, yeah, you go get some good information if you do, and hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter. Um, I've talked about sushi for the last couple weeks. I'm like, don't sleep on sushi. Uh, it's 1.7 billion in market cap, but its liquidity is almost the same as Uniswap. A Uniswap is at six billion, so you do the math, right? It could catch up really easily. Uh, another super chat there. Everyone's go buy you beers in Vegas. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, I really do. You know, like right now, I think most of us that's been stuck at home for so long, we want to go out, right? We're waiting for this pandemic to be over. We're waiting for everyone to get a vaccine or whatever, so we can start traveling again. I can't wait to meet most of you guys or some of you guys in Vegas when we had that party. I, I plan on booking like a auditorium, right? Like the same one that you saw uh, Carlos scream about Bit Connect, like just as big. And I'm gonna go on stage and I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite some good guests. So, and I expect attendance will be enormous, which is why I need an auditorium size uh, place. And uh, and we're gonna book out. I mean, we could probably book the whole, uh, the whole casino uh, if we wanted to with our crypto profits, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. I remember I said before we would have it at 20,000 Bitcoin. We're almost at 50,000 Bitcoin. I mean, just think about it. It's, just, it's, it's insane, right? Insane that we're nearing 50,000 Bitcoin. Remember at 30,000, which was not too long ago, right? I said 30,000 is expensive. But it's going to be nothing. It's going to be cheap compared to the future. And guess what? Doesn't 30000 sound pretty cheap right now? If you could buy Bitcoin for 30000 would you not buy it right now? Yeah, of course you would. Because you would be up a full 50% within just two weeks alone, right? So this is the thing with Bitcoin. No matter how high it goes, it keeps, it keeps attracting you to it. Because you know it's just going to go higher. It's going to go higher and higher and higher. But anyways... I got off track there, but uh, yeah, Vegas trip is going to come. It's, it's going to come. And uh, you know what? Uh, a lot of super chats there. Rubik's and what else is there? WAN chain coming up. I have not heard anything about WAN chain ever for a long time. Uh, Cyber chain, appreciate the super chat. All right. So moving on here. Um, 
you know, a lot of people like Al, Al Girl ran. I, I I don't know. I, I think it's okay. Not excited about it. I know BitTorrent's pumping right now because I see it from the from the people that that you know wh when you get a lot of comments from people and I see in my video, oh by by BitTorrent, by BitTorrent, by BitTorrent. I know some like pump group is initiating, so they're trying to get people to bump up. I would not fall for this. Nothing has happened in BitTorrent uh, for a long time, so do not fall for this pump. You go, you go get wrecked if you do. They've been stagnant the whole time, <laughs> and and uh, that's because they have done nothing. Um, Jay, I like UMA. I think UMA is pretty good. Um, I'll get to it a little bit. Wait, did I skip through UMA already? No, yeah. Uh, UMA is also very good. Up 144%. They create synthetic wrapped tokens for DeFi. For example, like wrapped Bitcoin or wrapped Ethereum or no, that doesn't make sense. You don't need to wrap Ethereum for Ethereum. But maybe you maybe you you, you can't use that for other blockchains, but they have wrapped Dogecoin, for example. There's a lot of wrapped stuff. So it, it does make sense. You could create any kind of synthetic token you want for DeFi purposes. So I understand with DeFi so hot, they're definitely hot too. Uh, but they're not the only players. Like Ren could also do it, but Ren is different that they don't actually need to come up with a synthetic token. It kind of gives you a placeholder. It'll just auto change for you, which is a little bit different. Um, so that's why a lot of people have been asking about Ren, and I looked into Ren deeply, and they have a really interesting concept so that if you want to stake your Bitcoin, uh, you can convert to Ren and use Ren for DeFi purposes. So Ren is also another one. Uh, Celsius, still very good. They're not pumping because honestly, they're not on Binance. If they get on Binance, Celsius will pump to the moon. That's honestly what's holding them back. The graph is awesome project. Uh, Yearn, uh, they keep getting hacked, so you can't rely on them. Kuzama is good. Zero X is going up like crazy. I looked up Zero X, and then someone else been uh, kept telling me about Loop Ring. I looked up Loop Ring. I'm still not too excited about Loop Ring, but Zero X is doing good things. They got another round of investments. They're going to their own decks, right? And they're kind of executing at this point too. So Zero X also doing very good. Um, Zillica has some stuff on their roadmap, but not too a fan of them. Digibyte I know is pumping right now, but there's absolutely no reason for that pump. So uh, I'm not excited about them. One Inch is another one I've covered recently. This one, I think it's undervalued too because it's under a billion dollars. They're a DEX aggregator, so you don't have to worry about swapping, looking at Uniswap or SushiSwap or another swap, and we'll talk about in a little bit. You just go on one inch and take care of it for you, and that's pretty convenient. That's pretty important right now. Uh, Voyager, which I love, but you know they have so much demand. They have to shut down registrations right now. I think that's what's holding them back. Quant is good for businesses. Here's the other swap. I'm telling you guys, pancake swap is go jump up to the moon just like sushi, just like others, because it's an AMA yield farming, just like sushi and Uniswap. But guess what? It's not on Ethereum. It's on Binance chain. That means there's no congestion. That means fees are very, very little. So pancake swap, even though it has a silly name, it's growing. It's growing, 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 and its liquidity is getting higher. So don't sleep on pancake swap. That that project's going up. Um, Phantom kind of getting into it. Kyber. I've been looking at Kyber recently. They're kind of like a hybrid DEX. So in terms of their overall value, market cap is relatively small. And another thing is their circulating supply is almost maxed out. So that's good. <clears throat> so there could be a chance that Kyber also starts pumping just because of the DEX craze right now, right? So just throwing that out there. Um, Engine is good. You know, Venus. Venus is one project I covered within my, um, within my Patreon. So it's also built on Binance Chain and it's going up to the moon. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to... Yeah, I should I should just cover it. I don't know if uh, uh, they're basically like die. They're like die. They're maker and die of Binance Chain, 
Right now, not a, lot, a whole lot of people is talking about Binance Chain, but keep in mind, Binance Chain is already complete. And it's run by Binance. So those two alone should give you, uh, should make you look at these projects, right? So just like how I talked about sushi, uh, pancake swap, Venus is the equivalent of maker for Binance Chain. So they're also pumping up to the moon too. So they're actually a good project, right? And there's a few others. There's other, a few other projects that I've covered recently in my Patreon. So those of you guys that are interested for with some exclusive content, check out my Patreon. But uh, but yeah, I mean, that's why I'm saying don't sleep on these projects. I I am a Bitcoiner at heart. I want to see Bitcoin go up to a million dollars and I hold a large amount of Bitcoins, right? But I can't deny the fact that on a bigger scale, macro scale, DeFi is here to stay. All coins are here to stay. They serve different purposes. I don't see them competing with each other. There's so many Bitcoin maximists that say, you know what, you know, the shit coins just make you to rob you of Bitcoin. Well, there is a lot of shit coins, but there's a lot that isn't right. So that's why I'm paying more and more attention to all coins. And if you dig down and you look into them, yeah, there's some really good ones out there. There's some really good ones out there. All right. Um, man, I, I said a lot there. Uh, Litecoin is, is trash VIP wolf. Um, you don't want to buy silver when you can buy gold. Uh, Kimmy gave a super chat. Red Fox Labs? I have no idea. Are they even a... Yeah, they are a project. Mike Novogratz invested. Well, let's just look at what it is. Southeast Asia's first blockchain venture builder. The project aims to create innovative and scalable blockchain solutions by building, launching, and scaling high-growth companies... So they're like a almost like a DAO kind of, right? I that that does not that does not uh, excite me right now. Uh, shoot, I the chat is going so fast. I think I missed so many. Um, so I, I give me time here. I have to I have to go up. Did I miss anything? Um, shoot, it, uh, I missed some super chats. Hard drama. I've been watching you for years. You made me believe in this market. I've done well with your knowledge, and now I'm teaching people I know. Thank you. Great. I appreciate that, and I'm glad to hear that you are also educating others. Um, now I'm scrolling down more. Z Zio asks, there's the rumor online that Elon is going to be using use Dodge for project in his boring company. Have you seen that? No. But this morning, I said not to sleep on Doge. You know why? Because he has not opened up crypto payments yet for Teslas. He says he's going to be accepting Bitcoin in the future. Well, guess what? I think he's going to accept Doge too. I think it's almost guaranteed. 99% chance that he will be allowing Dogecoin. And that adds a, a huge, I mean, it adds credibility to Dogecoin. These people always say Dogecoin has no use. Well, guess what? You could buy a Tesla with it soon, right? So I think that's coming. He might be doing it for other things. I've seen creative things where people are talking about Elon might, um, you know, might get might make all your Teslas into miners, even though it's minute amount. But maybe you could start mining Bitcoin or Dogecoin with your Teslas, or you could get a rebate, like a cash back rebate or a discount if you utilize Bitcoin. Or Dogecoin. So there's a lot of things swirling around. And they could all be true. They could all be true. I mean, this is why this is so exciting. It's so exciting. Uh, Claudio, I left a link about Grayscale on your Twitter for the stream. Let me know if it makes sense. I should join Patreon. You should join Patreon. There's, I got a group, a good group of people in there that's chatting away ideas. And uh, it's a good group of guys. I try to keep it small on purpose. Um is Wabi dead? Unfortunately, it looks like they are. Not really, but I just haven't seen them do anything. Uh, I'm hoping they come up because they're in a per perfect position to, to get pumped up right now, to be honest. But no one's looking at them. Have you looked at CVP? CVP? No. No idea who CVP is. Power pool. Uh, I don't like the fact that their their supply just jumped up without the price going up. What's what's that all about? They are on Binance, which is good. Um, let's look at this real quick. There's a solution for accumulating governance power in Ethereum-based projects by pooling tokens. 
um, refers to contract voting power. Decide, okay, so you're pooling tokens together for voting? That sounds ridiculous. Accumulate government power to Ethereum based protocols. Now, the minority token holders can extract minimal utility from such tokens. They cannot influence the votes. Significant shares don't provide an income as a result. Okay. Power pool allows the token holders to lend, pool, borrow governance tokens, get income from it, and accumulate government power and protocols. Okay. So, I, I don't know about that. I mean, lending, pooling, you know, I get that. To... To pull your governance tokens together, so you get a bigger. How does that work? You pull it together, you might not have the same opinion as the next person that's pulling. So I don't know. That doesn't sound really good to me. It's an interesting concept. It just doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. What else did I miss? I missed a lot. Um. What do you mean my API 3? Um, it's an Oracle play, but I don't think any Oracles compete with um, with Chainlink. So, unfortunately, that's, that's the thing. I don't think anyone can compete with Chainlink at this point if you're Oracle because you want to have the biggest and the best and the most reliable data. Um, so, I don't think they can compete. Do you think that will ever change Doge from being inflationary? No. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of people, because recently I've been talking about Dogecoin. A lot more people have obviously been talking about Dogecoin. And you have people that just really doesn't want to believe in it, right? Because it's a joke coin. I get it. But then people are saying, well, Dogecoin can never keep its value or go up because it's inflationary. Really? Really? Did you guys realize that Ethereum is inflationary? Ethereum increases supply by 8% every single year. Does that did that prevent it from going up to two hundred billion dollars in market cap? No, inflationary is fine. Most proof of stake coins or anything that's not uh, Bitcoin does have inflation built in to reward the miners or stakers. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is do you have more people buying it that can offset the inflation, right? And if you do. It's going to go up in value. Almost all these projects that you see here are inflationary. So inflationary does not mean that it will cap a project to death. Just look at Ethereum. If Ethereum is inflationary at this point, and it's still a $200 billion project, right? So don't let that make you think that it can't go up. So... I don't know how much Doge is going up. And I'm not saying that it can stay up here forever. But Doge kind of proves that you have enough people that believe in a project that is just go hold it no matter what. And they got more people to FOMO in while the prices go stay. That's how it is for everything. All these projects are at where they are because you have a certain group of people that believe in it, that hold it, and causing other people to buy it. That's simply it. Doesn't matter if they have utility or not. That may sound silly, like a stupid statement, that it doesn't matter they don't have utility. Well, uh, look at Cardano. Does it have any utility right now being an unfinished project? You could argue it doesn't, but it's worth $21 billion, right? So it just matters if you have a group of people that believe in something, that think it's worth that much and continue to buy and hold on it, then it's going to be worth that much. So I think Dogecoin is fine because Elon is pumping them, right? It can come down. It could go down to $0.06, cents, $0.05, cents, $0.04. Cents. But to go down below $0.01, cent, I just don't see that ever happening again. And I do think Tesla will do something with Dogecoin. So you don't want to sleep on them. A project exists to solve a problem. <laughs> Not all projects exist to solve a problem. What if you wanted to solve... The problem of uh, of laughter and there's not enough of it. <laughs> or what if you want to solve the problem that there's too many people that wants to become rich and there's no easy mechanism to do so? Maybe that's what Dogecoin is trying to solve. 
I don't know. I'm just making stuff up at this point. But you get what I'm saying. BDC is dumping. No, it's not. It's not. Um, you know, Bitcoin obviously have shown, despite F2 pool still selling, BDC have shown it has it has way more buyers and sellers than this point, right? Which is why it pumped up almost to forty eight thousand dollars to forty five. You know, if it stays even above forty four, forty three right now, this will be a perfect spot. We just want it to hover above forty thousand because you know why? That means we're utilizing this now as a support and we're forming a new range and that next range could be right at $50,000, right? Bitcoin at $50,000 is a big deal. Big deal. 50,000 freaking dollars. Just think about that for a second. It's it's pretty amazing. I think Mantra Dow is about to have an IDO soon. Think might do well. You know, overall, I'm, I'm just, I don't like DAOs that much. I, I mean, I don't, I don't see, I get the purpose. You're creating some organization that will be investing their funds into other projects. They're almost like, you know, they're like a self-governed uh, investment company. Kind of like that, right? But I'm not too, I'm not too excited about companies or projects that's doing so. I, I'd rather see projects that is innovative and that's doing something for their own, not just, investing in other companies right so overall DAOs don't interest me that much all right guys i'm gonna let you guys go this is a lively lively stream and too bad i'm not drinking right now i'm just drinking my diet coke because i plan on uh doing some exercise after this stream but you know what bitcoin is doing damn well right now because of elon uh, Tesla, Elon pretty much turned the world upside down. People can't believe what just happened that a top 10, top 10 company have just declared they bought Bitcoin and they're going to open up Bitcoin payments pretty soon. It's blowing people's minds. And this is just the beginning. The week just started. We don't know who else is going to announce. They're going to add Bitcoin to the reserves. And it is going to be a cascading effect one after another, after another, after another, after another. And pretty soon Apple is going to join. And when you have Apple join, the largest company in the world that is also doing this, basically, you can't have any naysayers anymore. It just doesn't make any sense. When you have the biggest companies of the world that is buying Bitcoin as reserve currency, that's all the proof you need that Bitcoin is a store of value. And you have people buying it by the boatload. And guess what happens? The price will go up because there's not enough supply. That's just simply it. Supply and demand. That's all you need to know about Bitcoin. And right now, there's a lot more demand than supply. And that's not going to change. Bitcoin is not inflationary. It's deflationary. It's only going to get more rare over time. But with that said, with Bitcoin going to the moon... Don't sleep on, don't sleep on the altcoins, especially DeFi coins, because they serve a different purpose. And they're going to be the next generation companies that our kids grow up using, right? They're going to be the next Apple and Tesla, and Microsoft and Google, right? And they're going to become the next JP Morgan, Bank of America and uh, Wells Fargo. They're going to become the next banks too. That's why you don't want to sleep on altcoins at this point as well. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. As always, smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. If you want some exclusive content, join my Patreon group. And also, if you want a crash course on Bitcoin, then check out my teachable lectures. All right. Um, as always, thanks for tuning in. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for my future stream tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right.